Previously on Speed Paint for Cuberman 3141's commission. A mysterious man, our hero, was out enjoying the wide open space in the desert with his SUV when he ran into a rock and broke his car. With no way home and no way of knowing which direction he came from, he grabbed some supplies from the SUV and started off to try to get back home. He traveled for days, becoming dangerously dehydrated when he came across a mysterious flat round stone sitting all by itself in the desert. It was cool to the touch and brought the blessing of coolness in the middle of such a hot desert. In the center was a snake wrapped around a pole, and it is here that we pick up the story again. He then remembers that he'd looked up when he'd reached the center here because he thought he'd heard a voice. He was still very woozy. He was likely to pass out soon. The sun still beat down on him even though he was now in cool stone. He still didn't have anything to drink, but maybe he had actually heard a voice. This stone didn't look natural, nor did that white post sticking up out of the stone. Someone had to have built this. Maybe they were still nearby. Maybe that was who talked to him. Maybe the snake was even their pet, and that's why it wasn't biting. He tries to clear his throat to say, Hello? But his throat is too dry. All that comes out is a coughing or wheezing sound. There is no way he's going to be able to talk without something to drink. He feels his pocket, and the bottle with the wiper fluid is still there. He shakily pulls the bottle out, almost losing his balance and falling on his back in the process. This isn't good. He doesn't have much time left, by his reckoning, before he passes out. He gets the lid off of the bottle, manages to get the bottle to his lips, and pours some of the fluid into his mouth. He sloshes it around, and then swallows it. He coughs a little. His throat feels better. Maybe he can talk now. He tries again, ignoring the snake. He turns to look around him, hoping to spot the owner of this place, and croaks out, Hello? Is there anyone here? He hears from his side, Greetings. What is it that you want? He turns his head back towards the snake. That's where the sound had seemed to come from. The only thing he can think of is that there must be a speaker hidden under the snake, or maybe built into that post. He decides to try asking for help. Please. He croaks again, suddenly feeling dizzy. I'd love to not be thirsty anymore. I've been a long time without water. Can you help me? Looking in the direction of the snake, hoping to see where the voice was coming from this time, he is shocked to see the snake rear back, open its mouth, and speak. He hears it say, as the dizziness overtakes him and he falls forward, face first on the stone. Very well. Coming up. A piercing pain shoots through his shoulder. Suddenly, he is awake. He sits up and grabs his shoulder, wincing at the throbbing pain. He's momentarily disoriented as he looks around, and then he remembers. The crawl across the sand. The dark area of stone. The snake. He sees the snake, still wrapped around the tilted white post, still looking at him. He reaches up and feels his shoulder, where it hurts. It feels slightly wet. He pulls his fingers away and looks at them. Blood. He feels his shoulder again. His shirt has what feels like two holes in it. Two puncture holes. They match up with the two aching spots of pain on his shoulder. He had been bitten by the snake. It'll feel better in a minute. He looks up. It's the snake, talking. He hadn't dreamed it. Suddenly he notices. He's not dizzy anymore. And more importantly, he's not thirsty anymore. At all. Have I died? Is this the afterlife? Why are you biting me in the afterlife? Mm, sorry about that, but I had to bite you, says the snake. That's the way I work. It all comes through the bite. Think of it as natural medicine. You bit me to help me? Why aren't I thirsty anymore? Did you give me a drink before you bit me? How did I drink enough while unconscious to not be thirsty anymore? I haven't had a drink for over two days. Well, except for the windshield wiper fluid. Hold it. How in the world does a snake talk? Are you real? Are you some sort of Disney animation? No, says the snake. I'm real. As real as you or anyone is, anyway. I didn't give you a drink. I bit you. That's how it works. It's what I do. I bite. I don't have hands to give you a drink. 
even if I had water just sitting around here. The man sat stunned for a minute. Here he was, sitting in the middle of the desert on some strange stone that should be hot but wasn't, talking to a snake that could talk back and had just bitten him. And he felt better, not great. He was still starving and exhausted, but much better. He was no longer thirsty. He had started to sweat again, but only slightly. He felt hot in the sun, but it was starting to get lower in the sky, and the cool stone beneath him was a relief he could notice now that he was no longer dying of thirst. I might suggest that we take care of that methanol you now have in your system with the next request, it continued the snake. I can guess why you drank it, but I'm not sure how much you drank or how much methanol was left in the wiper fluid. That stuff is nasty. It'll make you go blind in a day or two if you drank enough of it. Um, n next request, said the man. He put his hand back on his hurting shoulder and backed away from the snake a little. That's the way it works, if you like, that is, explained the snake. You get three requests. Call them wishes, if you wish. The snake grinned at his own joke, and the man drew back a little further from the show of fangs. But there are rules. The snake continued, The first request is free. The second requires an agreement of secrecy. The third requires the binding of responsibility. The snake looks at the man seriously. By the way, the snake says suddenly, My name is Nathan. Old Nathan. Samuel used to call me. He gave me the name. Before that, most of the bound used to just call me Snake, but that got old, and Samuel wouldn't stand for it. He said that anything that could talk needed a name. He was big into names. You can call me Nate, if you wish. Again, the snake grinned. Mm, sorry if I don't offer to shake, but I think you can understand. My shake sounds somewhat threatening. The snake gave his rattle a little shake. Um, my name is Jack, said the man, trying to absorb all of this. Jack Sampson. Can I ask you a question? Jack says suddenly. What happened to the poison, um, in your bite? Why aren't I dying now? How did you do that? What do you mean by, that's how you work? That's more than one question, grins Nate. But I'll still try to answer all of them. First, yes, you can ask me a question. The snake's grin gets wider. Second, the poison is in you. It changed you. You now no longer need to drink. That's what you asked for. Or, well, technically, you asked not to be thirsty anymore. But anymore is such a vague term. I decided to make it permanent. Now, as long as you live, you shouldn't need to drink much at all. Your body will conserve water very efficiently. You should be able to get enough just from the food you eat, much like a creature of the desert. You've been changed. For the third question, Nate continues, You are still dying. Besides the effects of that methanol in your system, you're a man, and men are mortal. In your current state, I give you no more than about another fifty years. Assuming you get out of this desert alive, that is. Nate seemed vastly amused at his own humor and continued his wide grin. As for the fourth question, Nate said, looking more serious as far as Jack could tell, as Jack was just now working on his ability to read talking snake emotions from snake facial features. Mm, first... You have to agree to make a second request and become bound by the secrecy, or I can't tell you. 
that's it for now. The snake has offered a pact of secrecy. Will Jack accept the terms? Find out next time.